Hello folks. Welcome, welcome to my wheel. Just got I'm just cleaning that cleaning that off because it's sort of dried off a little. And um if it had been uh, if it had been um wet I wouldn't have I wouldn't have bothered. Just got another another one to make here. So are we in the picture? Let's have a look. Oh maybe we'll just Yeah. As you can see the sun is streaming in. We're experiencing very warm weather indeed. Anyway. As you can see, I've got my gauge here. I've got my tools here, just the ones that I need, no more. And I've got my mirror here, set in a lump of clay, which is just there. So, there's one more of these to do. Uh, these are 12 ounces. I did, in fact, when I was doing the last clip, I think, mention that they were 14 ounces, that was a mistake there, they are actually 12 ounces. And um, yeah, we've got the, the camera around on the other side. I think from the, the side where you are now is actually a better, a better place to be really from the point of view of, of learning and seeing hand postures, etc., which are so important, aren't they, to know how to position your hands for those various movements that we have to do to get the clay to go where we want it to go. So these are to be made uh, four and a half inches tall and three and a quarter wide at the top or across the rim. So you can see the form is, is conical, keeping the conical I'm going to invent a word now. The conicality. <laughs> the conicality. <laughs> we have to invent some new words, don't we, sometimes? So I'm lifting the clay and I'm lifting it up to the gauge. So as I'm working the clay, I'm conscious of the gauge. I'm conscious that it's there. It gives me something to aim at, you see. I like to think of the gauge as... Imagine you were a, a soccer player and you were dribbling down the pitch to your opponent's goal. I like to think of the gauge as... Um, like a goalpost, if you like, it's something to aim at. In many people, perhaps they don't really, they don't really have any goalposts. It's like they're dribbling down the down the pitch to the end to their opponent's goal, but really there isn't a goal there at all. It's just they just kick it wherever they want. Well, if you have a gauge, it does. gives you a focal point, you see. I'm just going to use my ruler here a minute because even though I'm using a gauge I do like to check it, you know. 
fat needs to go a little more up. All right, I think that is, yep, yep, that is spot on. Okay, just using my throwing stick. A lot of people don't know how to hold a throwing stick, you see. Well, it, you need to hold it, it, I hold it like this. So I start going down the side like that, you see. Just cleaning off that, that slurry. Putting it in underneath. Putting in an undercut. Putting in a bevel, that all important bevel. Well, Simon, why do we put a bevel in there? What's the point of that? Well, you'll find out what that's for when you come to thumb them off afterwards. You see, because we're not going to we're not going to uh, trim these. These are finished throw. Finished throne? What you mean? I don't have to trim them? <laughs> yes! You do not have to trim them. What a relief. Well, you see, well, we take a little extra trouble when we're making them, you see. And then... Now, it's important here, a little detail here. This part here, you see, is slightly con cave so that fits the lower lip when you come to take a drink the inside here and it's very important this I think with drinking if you're having a drinking vessel to have the lip to have the lip here slightly tapered so it's, it's very slightly thinned but I thin it from the inside to the outside if that makes any sense and that um, And make sure you use your leather, all right? That's very important because a lot of people sometimes they say, "Well, I don't bother to leather. I just take I just take my sponge and I put it on the and that's good enough." Sorry, it's not good enough. <laughs> There's a good reason why you use the leather, and that is because the leather strengthens the lip of the pot and smooths the lip of the pot and you, that's, you really want that you see now if you use a sponge what happens is you bring all the grog and the sand to the surface and then what happens is the grog and the sand that's on the surface pokes through the glaze and you haven't got a smooth lip so as you can see there's a very good reason why we use a leather and probably a chamois leather is about the best you can get. You can use a bit of plastic actually, but I prefer a chamois. Clean your wire. Okay, now because I've got a stick gauge here, I'm going to have to cut away, cut away from me and not pull towards me. All right. So that's the the cut off wire lives there okay that's its home he lives there 24 hours a day he doesn't move anywhere else so you take him clean him and then you just go straight through like that and then you release him and that's that okay i'm just going to wipe my hands how's he looking you looking good I'm going to lift this off now with dry hands you see and you want to clasp it like this don't try to lift off a form like this 
using your fingertips because they will indent. You want maximum contact area, all right? So lift off and put him down just there. And there we are. Let's take the camera and put the camera down, down the side of the wearboard and let's see if that gauge is actually bringing us any consistency in our shape. It's always a good thing to do and I do think it's a, a good idea to use wearboards because wearboards you see encourage you to make a whole row of pots and so what am I looking for? I'm looking for first of all the height that the height is the same and then I'm looking for the shape um, I like to think I like to see this here a little crisper than what I've got on that one uh, that one is better there you see the crispness of that line where the change of the form is from there to there that little bit that juts out there that little elbow if you like I like to see that really crisp that's a nice one there that's a nice one there and that's the one I've just made you can see I think it helps the form you know if you're if there is that little bit of crispness there. I mean I like it you know okay folks well there's there's that that's just more tankards but that's what it's all that's what it is isn't it when you're when you're throwing it's more <laughs> at least it is here I try to make it so it's more 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 don't do one don't do two do ten do twenty because that's that's how you that's how you really that's how you that's how you improve that's how you get better that's how you uh, in, that's how you hone your skills so, I encourage you to do the same. Um, please go to my website, simonleachpottery.com. Uh, we've got plenty of workshop spaces coming up over the next three, four months. So check in there if you're interested to come for a workshop. Um, just check to see what the availability. It does actually say, you know, one space left or two spaces left. Uh, if you'd like to come along. Um, Go there, find out some details about that. I guess that's all for right now. In my next clip, actually, I'm going to be... I've got some... Over here, I've got some, uh, some tankers that I did... That last lot that I, I did, that you saw me do. And I'm going to be... Um, I'm going to be engraving some of them. I'm going to be using, actually... The, uh, my lemon zester tool. We, well, I showed you this before. This is a lemon zester tool. It's a very, it's a great tool for, for, for carving into clay. Okay, folks, take it easy, but keep practicing. Bye. La, 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 la.